DC Comics has announced they're going to be making some new digital content. Digital comics are a huge industry, so it makes sense that they would want to tap into this market. And they've announced a few titles going forward. But the main one I want to talk about is a Nightwing-focused comic called Nothing But Nightwing, with two T's on the butt. There are quite a few comics that focus on sexualization of their characters, playing into the old adage that sex sells. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude or a pearl clutcher, but sometimes it goes too far. And that's definitely the case for Nightwing and other characters I want to talk about. And why I think these portrayals are ultimately not handled well. They can be extremely gratuitous and tacky, and in some cases even harmful, which is actually really messed up. And I realize comics are not the only medium that has this problem, but for the purposes of this video I want to focus on comics. And I'm going to be focusing on DC specifically, although Marvel is very guilty of this too. But before I get started, I do want to give a content warning for this video. It's going to be delving into some pretty dark subject matter, and if that makes you feel uncomfortable for whatever reason, I totally understand. So you can feel free to click off this video and watch something else. And with that out of the way, let's get into the main subject. So comics have had this unfortunate trend of flanderizing their characters to the point where they're just hot, but boring. And they're doing this to Dick Grayson now too, which we can see in this recent Nothing But Nightwing series, the latest in this tradition, where they tend to ignore a character's history, characterization, and quirks, and basically just reduce them to being eye candy. And any other aspect of the character, especially internal factors, are totally swept under the rug. One example of this is Red Hood and the Outlaws, which features Starfire on the main team. And she is flanderized to the point where she basically has no character. She was first introduced decades ago, and is often portrayed as the emotional core of the team she's on. She's a character who suffered a lot in her past, including being sold into slavery and experimented on. But despite the pain she suffered, she cares deeply about the people around her and wants to do her best to try to make others happy and safe. But none of that is focused on in Red Hood and the Outlaws. Practically every panel featuring her is a pinup, and she's pretty much treated like a blow up sex doll, but with a pulse. Kind of. They basically made it that Tamaranians have short term memory loss and are extremely horny, to the point where she can't remember her old friends, including Dick, and the only thing she seems interested in is having sex, which she offers to Roy almost immediately after meeting him, because he bored her by asking her about her old friends. She cares so little about her old team that just talking about them bores her. Also, she's currently dating Jason, but it's not considered cheating because she's not emotionally invested. They literally took the emotional core of the team and, well, took away her emotions. Her characterization in I Am Not Starfire is more accurate than this. And unfortunately, they've been doing the same thing to Dick for a while now. Now, when it comes to sexualization and objectification in comics, Nightwing probably gets it more than any other male character. Like, it's to the point where it's on the same level as female characters. Not to the same level as Starfire, but it's still very prominent. And again, it ends up getting to the point where it overtakes his actual character. So let's finally get into this comic. Spoilers, if you care. But yeah, spoiler warning. But Dick Grayson has to go undercover as an underwear model. Now, this is nothing new for him. He's gone undercover before, including as a male stripper. Again, they really like to sexualize him. And I get it, I'm a straight woman. But at the same time, it shouldn't come at the cost of his character. And that's true for any character. Anyway, him being an underwear model is just another excuse to objectify him. And it's not that I have a problem with him being a supermodel specifically. I think that part's fine. It's everything around that that makes it a problem. It all comes down to execution. A character can be hot and still have substance to them. And I really wish that writers would learn this. This comes to a head when Dick comes home to his girlfriend Barbara. Oracle wants to break up with him, saying that he has no hobbies or identity outside of being Nightwing, which is quite the take and I hate it. Dick is one of the more well-rounded characters in the Bat family, but DC has a nasty habit of belittling him and making him the butt of the joke, both figuratively and literally. Like Starfire, he's often the heart of the Bat family. We got to see him grow from the boy wonder to an established hero in his own right, and he has so much to offer as a character, but instead they reduce him to just a hot guy with a hero complex. This is just so disrespectful, and I feel like these writers don't even care really about Dick's prior characterization or history as a character. To them, he's just a butt with a man attached to it. Just like how Starfire and Red Hood and the Outlaws was reduced to just a sex object. At least Dick gets to keep his memory. That has to count for something. We also see these objectifications being brought over to other media adaptations. Like the way Dick is portrayed in the Harley Quinn show, which is an adult comedy show, and unfortunately one of the ones that over relies on shock value and swearing to get laughs. 
which personally isn't my type of humor, and honestly, Dick is a good example as to why that is. I realize that as a comedy, they're basically making fun of all of the characters, but Dick is completely out of character as this brooding Batman wannabe, and pretty much the only joke they use for him is his butt, and that's it. The butt of the joke. Again. Literally. And it just isn't funny. Spoilers for the show, again, if you care, but in season 4 he dies, and they make him a custom casket that has a butt on it, implying that they buried him upside down. I mean, come on. They also gave him Jason resurrection with the Lazarus Pit thing? That's confusing. Despite what the writers think, Dick actually has his own stuff going on. But also, does anyone actually find any of this funny? And unfortunately, these weird characterization choices aren't the only problems that comics and other media have. Oftentimes, SA is used for drama or for some kind of weird wish fulfillment, to the point where it comes off as cheap and honestly pretty insensitive. And I think it is possible for writers to use these darker themes and have them serve the story, but oftentimes that's not really the case. Like going back to Cory, for example, part of Starfire's backstory is that she was enslaved and tortured, which includes SA, but they use it to explore her character and make her more layered, talking about how her experiences changed her as a person, taking away her innocence, even to the point where she killed her attackers, and she's still haunted by this time in her life, even though she tries not to think about it, and she struggles with wanting revenge on her sister, who is the one who sold her into slavery in the first place by betraying her, but unfortunately, more often than not, they don't actually explore this aspect of her character, and like Dick, only focus on how hot she is, but ultimately make her pretty shallow. Like in Teen Titans The Judas Contract, which I'll elaborate more on that comic later, there's a scene where Tara and Beast Boy are talking, and when discussing their team, she dismisses Starfire, calling her Princess Sparkle Thong, basically dismissing her as being hot but having nothing else to her character. Garfield challenges that, saying that she's a refugee hiding from her evil sister. Every one of the teams had it rough. Yeah, I can tell Princess Sparkle Thong knows all about eating from a dumpster. Cory's a refugee being stalked by her homicidal sister. But honestly, watching this movie, you don't really get any of that. Cory is depicted as just being really thirsty for Nightwing. Not that I blame her, but she makes a bunch of inappropriate comments, including in front of the miners. You did very well. You lasted far longer this time. <coughs> I meant in training, of course. He's very proficient when we have- Cory! The entire time, all she's doing is posing for the camera, and they don't actually show us what Garfield was talking about. And again, a character can be hot and have depth. Like I said, these darker themes can be used to enhance a story, but oftentimes they're used more for some weird plot device, instead of really being treated with the seriousness that it deserves to be. Like, Nightwing was R-worded multiple times throughout the comics. There's one comic where a woman disguises herself as Starfire and sleeps with him, and another comic where he's assaulted on a rooftop. And there are a number of characters and plot lines I can go over when it comes to SA. But what bothers me the most about all this is that oftentimes the characters responsible don't take accountability, and even worse, the victims are victim blamed. Like when Mirage reveals to Dick that she assaulted him by disguising herself as Starfire, Pantha blames him and calls him a slut. Excuse me? Even Mirage rubs it in by saying he should have been able to tell the difference. The whole thing is just so cruel. And fortunately, this is not all that uncommon. They did this to Batman too, and also victim blame him, where Talia al Ghul drugs Batman, forces him to get her pregnant, and then drops the kid on him just out of nowhere. He didn't even know that Damien existed, but she just shows up one day, taunts him about it, and then leaves because there's an assassin after them. And then to add insult to injury, Damien, who is the product of this messed up situation, victim blames his own father. But I needn't bring up your past poor choice in women, including but not limited to my mother. Damien, I'm not- Not that I'm on great company here, mind you. However, I must insist that you use protection. And another thing, cover your drink. Goodbye, Damien. Yeah, goodbye, Damien. On top of the horrible things that Damien said, the background music is framing it to be comedic. They're not treating the situation with the seriousness it needs to be, and Talia is not condemned the way she needs to be, just like when Mirage and Tarantula assaulted Dick. And as if their attitude towards Grapus weren't bad enough, they also have really weird PDF file stories. And again, we see Dick being victimized, because I swear DC hates this man. So there was this woman named Liu, along with her husband, 
husband, and the two of them like to go after corporations, and they set their sights on Wayne Enterprises, and decided to get there by going through Dick, who was 16 at the time. So Liu grooms Dick and sleeps with him. And when Dick thinks back to this time in his life, it's framed as oddly sentimental. Like, he speculates the reason he has relationship problems now is not because the writers hate him, but because he's still hung up on the one that got away. And by got away, I mean they realized she was just going after Wayne Enterprises, and then she spent five years in jail, and then was killed by rival gang members. Good times. But yeah, he's still hung up on his groomer, because DC hates Nightwing. And it's not just Nightwing either. Like going back to the Judas contract, which by the way was written by the same guy who wrote two of Nightwing's assaults, Mirage and Liu. So I guess that tracks. But this comic also involves using statutory as a plot point, and it makes a lot of really creepy excuses. It involves a girl named Tara and Deathstroke, who is a middle-aged man. However, despite Tara being the minor, she's portrayed as the villain here. Even going out of their way to make Slade look more sympathetic. Tara's evil and crazy, and this whole very adult relationship was totally consensual. Even though that's not how being a minor works. Minors cannot consent. Tara ends up getting killed off during the comic, and then it ends with Slade having a conversation with Beast Boy that kind of comes off as like they're trying to absolve him, claiming that they were mutually using each other, and that the law says he's innocent, despite the fact that he's committed many, many crimes, not just the statutory. But also, she is a minor, and he's a full-grown man. Plus, the way they demonize Tara is just creepy. Raven basically says that she's a sociopath, unable to love or hate, and then when she dies, the narration goes out of their way to talk about how crazy and evil she was, and no one taught her this, she just is. And she totally brought this on herself. Except she was the illegitimate child of a king, which caused her to be scorned, and she was feared for her powers, so she was hated, and she was brutally experimented on. To be honest, she really didn't have any positive influences in her life. Not that it justifies her betraying the Titans, but it's not that surprising that she's as messed up as she is. It's not like it came out of nowhere. And you can totally have a teenage villain. The writers go so far out of their way to have absolutely no sympathy for her, and yet excuse Deathstroke. I really wish they had treated this with more nuance and, you know, not be statutory apologists. As if having villains act this way wasn't bad enough, they've even had heroes do this. Yeah, Hal Jordan. You know, the guy who's supposed to have the strongest will in the DC universe, and yet can't resist hooking up with a 13-year-old. So in this comic, we meet a Green Lantern named Arisia, who's 13 years old. She ends up developing a crush on Hal, and it's not uncommon for kids to have crushes on older people or adults, and it's not necessarily a problem, as long as the adult in the situation doesn't act on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hal tries to turn her down, talking about the age difference, and she tries to justify it by saying that on her world, time moves twice as fast as it does on Earth, except on her home planet, she's still legally considered a minor. So the time differences between the two planets doesn't really matter. I mean, baby Yoda is 50 and he's still a baby. Wait, they said 50 years old. Species age differently. It wouldn't be okay to date Grogu just because he's 50. So in desperation, she uses her ring to transform her body to be mature, which the ring should not be able to do that, honestly. But screw the rules, this is comics. You can just make up whatever you want. And despite the fact that she has a mature body now, she is still mentally 13. Despite that fact, Hal ends up dating her anyway. Even going as far to say as he has to convince the rest of the team to not think of him as a child molester. He literally said, that. And I feel like if it has to be stated, you shouldn't do it. I feel like DC hates Hal too. They definitely hate Dick, but they hate Hal also. He rejected her outright multiple times, but she just would not take no for an answer. To the point where she was basically a stalker. He was totally upfront about his feelings. She is a minor. He wasn't comfortable with the age gap. And he's not even interested in dating right now anyway because he's still not over his past relationship. But she just keeps pressuring him. No means no. Seriously, it's like the writers just insisted that this has to happen. And that's been a scar on Hal's character ever since. Even though, and I know this will sound weird, since Hal's a fictional character, but this doesn't feel like Hal's fault. He literally sets his boundaries and then on the very next page he's kissing her. This is just bad writing. Boy do I love comics. Anyway, I'm gonna 
gonna end the video here. That was draining, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the darker subject matter. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to the members. Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Equestron, Norman Sweetcream, Rabion Coincidence, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Lucas Geist, J Draws, Meowzers, Sky, Philip, Isaac Martinez, Garcia XV Legend, Tobias Weller, Bandito Bane, Mac B909, Dakari the Professor, Jin the Goblin, Caleb Nelson, Todd McCaffrey, Killer Bomb, Omri Fair, Crimson Phantom, Data Dine Executive, Owen Wildish, and Alto Burrito 9506. Thank you all so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also have buy me coffee if you want to support us that way. And if you enjoyed this content, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And that part's free. I'd really appreciate the support. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.